Baruch Hashem. It is a, a very pleasure to get to come and speak with you guys. Um, the video that I'm going to do today, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And um, I'm sure that even though I, I don't intend for this to hurt anyone's feelings, I'm sure that there may be feelings hurt nonetheless. And I don't, that's not the purpose though. The purpose is, is that we can learn because in the ministry that I'm in here, dealing with my own people, the Jewish people, and trying to get them to recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah, it attracts all kinds of people that come and, and, and visit with us and share their views with me and things of that nature. And, and I do appreciate, I appreciate a lot of the different views that I get. But I also get some things that are, that are just concerning to me, very concerning to me. And um, one of the big things that I've had over the last several years is I've had a great number of people that have contacted me that believe they're one of the witnesses. And, uh, and, and I don't, you have to understand, many of these people are good Christian people. They, they love the Lord. And I know that it's not that they, um, that they mean bad by it. And, and, and there again, uh, let me just state too, it's not to say that there may not, one day somebody calls me that, that, that maybe is one of those, or both of them for that matter. I don't personally have no idea, but it's not the only subject I'm going to cover here. I want to also speak about um, revelations that people are getting regarding the Word. And the reason why I'm going into this is because it's specifically, I've, been, I've had precious people that have contacted me, uh, and, and I really stress that. I don't say that just to be saying it. There's a wonderful brother, I won't call any names on this, but there was a wonderful brother. Um, and I really believe him to be a godly brother that contacted me that wanted to share with me a revelation that he had. And, and we, we even parted uh, as far as, even though we differed in opinions on it, he's a precious brother. I, I really believe him to be a godly man. Uh, but I wanted to bring it up. And there again, my brother, I know you'll probably listen to the video. It's certainly nothing against you or, or, or how God may be leading you. But... It's just an example that I want to share with people so you understand what the importance is of the hour we're living in. Because this is what has created so many different denominations in the Christian faith, is all the different revelations, and yet we're not checking them with the Word of God. The issue as far as the two witnesses, again, I want to, I want to take you to, to the Word to prove what, how do you identify a witness to begin with. And there again, it's a simple little thing. In fact, there, there was a brother that contacted me just recently that even while speaking to him, the Lord revealed to me what the identifying mark is of the two witnesses in the first place. And nothing against that brother by no means. I mean, he means well. He loves the Lord. I, I believe that he may even have some marvelous gifts in his life. But again, Let's look at what the Word of God says about what our feelings are, what our revelations are, and match it to that. So I'm going to have to use some examples here, not just these two brothers here. I'm going to take you to some more examples because I've had a lot of people, I've even had people contact me believing that they're the Messiah. And I, and I even said to my wife one day, why does people contact me about this? And, and the only thing I can figure is because being Jewish, I have a passion for my people. It doesn't make me one of the two witnesses. It's just I have a passion for my people. No different than, than other Christians that have passion for the Jewish people to see them believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. But it doesn't make us one of the two witnesses. And definitely doesn't make us the Messiah. But there's people out there that have reached out to me that really believe they are. Um, and then thirdly is dreams. And the reason I'm coming back to dreams again as uh, because recently posted on my own Facebook page there, there was, uh, and, and again, I won't call names on this, just simply just to, it's, it's not to, re in one way it's a rebuke, but it's a, it's a rebuke of love to say, check everything by the word of God. And just because we have a sensation or something doesn't make the dream a, a reality. And, and just because the neighbor down the street gets the same dream or this one there gets the same dream, 
If it doesn't come to pass, it's not of God. And you've got to pray until that spirit comes off of you and, and, and ask God, don't let that happen again. But now let's deal with the dream part first there because I want to go into that. And I know people that have dreams that are godly dreams now. So please don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't want to confuse the groups here. But even myself, I've had many dreams in life. Uh, but I always check it with the word. And I'm careful about making something public because what if it is just a dream that's just inspired because of our love for the Lord and yet we have all kinds of dreams and stuff or maybe we misinterpret it trying to interpret to the people but maybe your dream could be true but you put it in a, in, in, in a way that you, you try to interpret it and it's not meant for you to interpret it or somebody that interprets your dream and then you go and you, you bring that forth and that's wrong. You know, it brings a reproach upon Christianity and people are watching you. And, you know, it's just like even the doctrine against women, you know, where people have the doctrine that women are supposed to be, you know, silent, don't speak, your, your husband's your boss, you know. I mean, what's God supposed to do? Come to your husband and ask permission to save you? I mean, come on, all right? Now, see, this is the thing. People are watching, and this is what drives people from the gospel, is all this stuff that's being said, and then it doesn't come to pass. So, you know, to go into the dream part, someone had posted a posting on my website, on my Facebook page, that, uh, that there was a great event that was going to happen. Uh, there was going to be this weekend, and it was going to happen this weekend, that some, uh, some event that was going to happen here in the United States and, you know, I, I don't, there was no specification, but it had been confirmed by this one and that one with the same things is going to happen. But then the weekend comes and goes and nothing happens. You know, now I guess, you know, Monday's a holiday. Maybe that's considered part of the weekend as well. Who knows? I, I know that's, that's nonsense. But, you know, I've seen this now for several years because the more we get into the ministry, the more that we have people that contact us with similar type things. And, and in many cases, they just don't happen. You know, in some cases, I've had people that have dreams that, that do, you know, but it's, it's rare. It's, very, it's, not, it's not nowhere near as often as you would imagine that dreams that people have, they, they don't come to pass. Or maybe they may be of God, but then somebody interprets it and they mess up the interpretation. It doesn't come to pass. So I just encourage you, before you take something public, Really, you need to know it's from God because if you, if you speak it publicly and it doesn't happen, you know, now, if you, now I say that in, in, in regards to one thing. Let's say you speak about a dream that you believe is going to happen, but you want to, you, you're going to, to say to the people, I don't say it's of God, I don't know, but I dreamed about, oh, let's say a tidal wave is going to strike South Florida or, or California or something and and, you know, and I, I'm, I'm concerned that it may happen this year, you know. But, but if you take and you say, I, I can't say that's really so. I don't know, you see. Be careful what you say is of God because so many people are trying to speak for God and it's not of God in the first place, you know. Uh, so I only ask you to be careful about these things. Uh, because there's too much of this going on, and it brings a reproach on Christ. You're, you're bringing a reproach on Him. And the Jewish people who are watching as well, that you're supposed to have the truth, they look at that, and it just becomes a laughing stock to them. They don't, it just makes them that much more not believe your testimony. And so it's important because people are watching you. Whether you realize it or not, they're watching you. And believe me, even Jewish people that are not believers in Yeshua, they watch your websites. They see these things. And if you post things and they don't come to pass, they've got the Torah. The Torah says, if there's a prophet among you and what he says doesn't happen, then don't believe him, for I'm not with him. You know. Now, if you've got a doctrinal opinion or something, or you believe something's going to happen, and you, and you state, you know, I think this is the way it'll be. I, I'm not a prophet. I, I can't say. It's just, it's just my thought on it. Okay, that's, that's fine. You, okay, you're, you're being honest and true with the people. See, as long as you're being truthful about that and not trying to make it like somebody. All right, sorry about that. I love you guys really and truly. And, and I don't even know who posted. It might not even be anybody who listens to the ministry. Maybe just somebody on Facebook. I, I have no idea where it come from or how it got there. And it could have just been a friend of ours that shared it that 
probably didn't know any th difference either. So, and it's nothing against that person that would have shared it. I, I don't know. I, I just, I knew that it was there and it just concerns me because I see that a lot and then things don't happen. Okay, second thing is here is Revelations. Uh, a wonderful brother co contacted me. Uh, we've been trying to get up together. He wanted to share some things with me. And in his revelation, it was about regarding the 144,000. And as he began to share with me the, the revelation that, that he felt like God had showed him, that the 144,000 was regarding um, the resurrection of the children that Herod had slew during the times of, of Yeshua, when, when Yeshua was on the earth. And, you know, when Herod, he was trying to find which child would be the Messiah, so he, he put a decree out to go kill all the children from two years old and down. And so, and, and when I began to listen to the brother, because he's a godly brother, wonderful brother, and, uh, but when he began to share the revelation with me that he believed that came from God, uh, it really looked good. It was very interesting. And he takes me to, uh, I believe it's Revelation 14, and uh, he talks about the 144,000, how they hadn't been defiled with women, and how they were uh, standing there with harps. They were the first fruits unto God. And he says to me, he says, see, brother, and he, and he really had a wonderful, elaborate way of putting it forward. It did look legitimate from, from a glance at it. And he said, the 144,000 are actually the boys. They're the first fruits unto God in which that were murdered by Herod. And, and I did listen intently because, it, you know, it was interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm not against listening to someone's revelation because... I don't have all the answers, you know, and so you never know. God, God works with this person, works with that one, and, and that's why we're a many-membered body of the body of Christ. But the thing is, is no matter what our revelation is, we've got to examine it with the Word of God. And if it doesn't match the Word of God, we cannot and should not accept it. And you, as the, as the brothers and sisters that listen, because many people, they listen to all kinds of voices. They listen to this minister, that minister, this guy here he got that opinion, this one's got that opinion, and that opinion, and that opinion. And before you know it, your mind is swimming in confusion because this one says this about that, that one says that about that, and it does. It creates a lot of confusion. And... So as he began to present this, I, I finally I stopped my brother and I said, brother, I said, I just, I, I, I said, it does sound like a very plausible explanation. I said, but you've got some problems with it. And he, he said, what do, you, what do you mean? What, what, what kind of problem do you think would be there with it? I said, for one, I said, the 144,000 are made of the 12 tribes of Israel. There's 12,000 from each tribe. When, when Yeshua, when Jesus was here on earth, there were only three tribes there. It was the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and the tribe of Levi. The Samaritans, they were just half Jew, half Gentile. They weren't even part of that. I said, so therefore, you don't have the 12 tribes of Israel because the other nine tribes went into exile. They went into exile at 723 years before Yeshua even got here to the earth. I said, so how do you deal with that? And he told me, he says, well, I've got an answer for that. Well, you can't, you can't get around that, period. You just cannot get around it. The boys that were killed were Jews. You understand? He wasn't going to the Samaritans. He went, Herod went to the Jews and killed the Jews of three tribes. Now, do I believe they go in the presence of God when they died? Sure, they're children. They're, they're, they're without sin. But it didn't match the word. But then... As he, we were looking at it, he shared with me that he believes that that's the, that's the great crowd that comes back, the saints that come back with Yeshua to fight and battle. You know, he believed that that was also the ones that were resurrected. He takes me to uh, in Matthew where it talks where Matthew records the resurrection and how that the, the, the dead that rose up and they revealed themselves to those that were living. And by the way, some people may not know that. I say revealed themselves to the living. 
The reason I say that, because in Matthew's Hebrew gospel, that's what Matthew writes about. He says they revealed themselves. It wasn't that the Jews of that day didn't recognize who they were or maybe assume that they might have been somebody. Matthew said they revealed themselves to the people. So in other words, when Abraham and Sarah and them raised up, the people recognized them. How do they deal with that? You know, but in his own doctrine, he was believing that it was only these boys that died. That was the first fruits. That was the ones that were resurrected. I said, it doesn't match the word. I said, Job said, in the last day, I will stand on this earth and I, my, I know my Redeemer liveth. I'm just paraphrasing, but I know my Redeemer liveth. And in the, in the last days, I'll stand upon the earth and my eyes shall see him. My eyes and not another. My Redeemer, he's talking about Yeshua, Jesus. And he says, my eyes are going to see him. And, oh man, I sit there and I said, but so what you don't seem to understand, brother, is that what Yeshua said is, is coming to pass now. You see, I said, what he said was going to happen is happening. Or, or happened with, with Job. Job saw Yeshua. He raised up also as well. All the, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Even Joseph said, don't leave my bones down here. Take my bones to Israel. Why? Because Joseph knew that there was coming a resurrection. He knew that Yeshua would come. And that he was going to raise up this body. That, that, he would raise, that God would raise him up. And, his, and the Holy One would not see corruption. And he knew these things. Oh my gosh, I tell you what. I keep glancing off. Sorry about that. I'm trying to load a video for you guys at the same time I'm talking to you. You know, he knew that. And oh gosh, I tell you what, praise be to God. You know, see the thing is, is we, 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 got, to, we got to recognize, pardon me just one second here because I know you guys want to see this video here and you won't know anything about it if I don't load it here. Here we go. We get it started for you. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. That can load here. It'll be loaded probably by the time we finish here. So, but at any rate though, um, Joseph knew, so he had him to bring his bones up there because he wanted to be part of that resurrection. So the whole point is though, is as wonderful as the revelation that my brother was claiming to have sounded good, it didn't line up with the word of God. And I love this brother, wonderful brother, you know, but I have to stay with God's word. And I know now we can search out, we can go deeper, we can, and, and this, this brother here, I know he uses all kinds of different translations. He's searching for what's true and stuff, and I applaud that, but it's still got to match the word of God. Even if we find that something was mistranslated here. Like in the women issues, so much of that is mistranslated. And that's hard on men because men don't like it. They, they're so used to thinking that everything here is literal and that's what it was supposed to be. Have no idea that the Vatican wanted to make sure you don't know nothing. They don't want, they don't want no women in control because, see, women are spir more spiritual. So, now just a little side note. I've got to share this with you here. There was a sister that, that wrote me recently, or actually called me, and... Um, and it was over the name of Jesus. I thought that was really interesting because she had, be, when she heard that his real name was Yeshua in Hebrew, she got to where she always wanted to call him Yeshua. And I thought this was so beautiful, you know, because I like to call him Yeshua as well. And she said one day she was praising the Lord. And while she was praising the Lord with her hands up and just worshiping the Lord, she said she heard like a little chuckle, a little laughter. And she said, then the Lord spoke to her and said to her, it is true, my name is Yeshua. But he says, it's okay if you call me Jesus too, because that's how you come to know me as your Savior. And I thought that was so kind and so sweet. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you there because me, myself, I, I prefer Yeshua, but I realize, and, and a lot of the Messianic brothers know this as well, there's such a, a, a huge multitude of people that listen 
And so therefore, sometimes they don't realize what Yeshua is or who Yeshua is. And we don't even have time to educate an entire world on, on how to say Yeshua. We're too close to his coming. And so a lot of people, in some countries, it's not Jesus either. It's, it's Jesus or, 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 or Jesus or Yesu and, and all different kinds of ways that he's called. You know, so God understands that. And he's his mercy. If you don't know how to say Yeshua, believe me, it's not he's not going to throw you out and say, I ain't going to save you because you didn't know how to say my name. See, but so anyway, that's a little different story altogether. But anyway, I trust that little testimony blessed you. It blessed my heart to hear that. I thought that was so kind. That, that sounds like him. It sounds like our God. That much love that he understands the way you come to know him. And though I know the name Yeshua is, is true, I've seen the dead raised with the name of Jesus. I've seen the blinded eyes come open at the name of Jesus. So I know he'll hear that name as well. I've seen cancers removed at that name. And I've seen great miracles with the name of Yeshua as well. So I know it's true nonetheless. Anyhow, all right, now, that's, that's dealing with revelations. Let me, let me go, though, this next one, though, the two witness issue, is the most critical. And I have to just share this with you because I have seen many people, many people that have come to me. Uh, most of them don't, don't really know me personally. Uh, they just, they've contacted me through YouTube or Facebook or, or whatever the case may be. And they believe that God has called them. In some cases, I actually have a little bit more understanding because there'd be some people that would contact me that would say, you know, maybe I've been called to be one of the witnesses, you know, but for them, it's just, I, I don't know. They, they would tell me things that would happen and they think, well, maybe that's what God's called me for. I have, res I have more respect for somebody that does that. I, I really do. Because I, I, I know it's a struggle regardless you know, for them to go through that. Me, myself, I, I don't believe to be that I'm one of the witnesses at all. You know, and I've had many, many people tell me, Brother Steve, I believe you're called as one of the witnesses. And I'll say, well, that's, that's I, I appreciate that. That's nice, but he's just, he's never revealed that to me. So I, I can't say that, you know. But you have to understand, for me, the Word of God is my absolute and I can't vary not one side to the left or one side to the right from his word. And I won't do it for nothing or nobody. See, and if I, if I stay true to you as well that way, I have to scratch my ear there. I got a little thing that's irritating it there. So I always say that because you never know. You got these people that, 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 that study these things. Well, they scratch their ear, they pull their chin, pick their nose or whatever. This one's lying, this one's unsecure. And maybe there's truth to that, but I always have issues. You, get, you have a beard and a mustache, you're going to scratch everywhere. It just does it because the sweat starts coming and makes you do everything. So at, at any rate, though, when it comes to the issue of the two witnesses, this is a serious situation. Because there's so many Christians out there that are, that are listening to this minister or that minister. And then the next thing you know, even if they don't outright say it, some outright believe that they're one of the two witnesses. And then other ones, they'll say it. And uh, let, let me just put it to you like this here. I, I've even had one guy tell me that he's Moses. And he's got a stick. He carries a stick with him. He claims that God has told him to strike the earth and the waters would turn to blood in this place and that place. And, and now he's not outright said he's one of the two witnesses, but my goodness, if you claim to be Moses, who do you think you are then? You see what I'm saying? Now, and I'm not saying he's not a good brother. He, this, this is a sincere man. He's a sincere man of God. And, and I believe he does love the Lord. Okay. I've had others, like I said, I've even had them come to me, tell me they were the Messiah incarnated in flesh and they were going to come and reveal themselves to the world. And they contacted me and said that you're one of the witnesses and you've got to prepare the way. And I tell them back, I'm not a witness. Just because I'm a Jewish guy that believes that Yeshua is the Messiah, I said, that don't make me anybody. I said, I have a passion for my people because I'm Jewish and I love my, my brothers and my sisters that are Jewish and I want to see them saved. 
You know, like Paul, when Paul came on the earth, there was a, there was a space of time where the gospel, where he worked from the time when Yeshua left and to the time that the gospel went to the Gentiles, he dealt with Jew and Gentile alike. You know, perhaps maybe that's similar to the type of ministry, you know, working with the Gentiles, but yet working with the Jews as well. It doesn't make me Paul, though. There's more people besides Brother Steve that are working with both Jews and Gentiles. But I do have a passion for my people. That's true. I have a very deep, sincere passion for my people. And, and I've had total strangers that I didn't know would walk up to me and say things like that. Well, you're called to be this or you're called to be that. And, well, that's nice, but he's never said nothing like that to me. All right? But here's the thing, though. Because the type ministry that I have, I've had many people that have come to me that say they're one of the witnesses and they've come to me because I'm supposed to go with them to Israel. This is not a joke. And then, again, a brother that called me that feels that, that he's got that same gift and believes that he's one of them, you know, and, and then my heart goes out for people like that because why? It's not lining up with the Word of God. And I can prove it to you. I don't care who they are, where they are. I guarantee you one thing. You go to Israel when the blood moon strike this year or even next year, you're going to have more witnesses there than you can imagine. There's going to be more Moses and Elijahs and two guys walking together claiming to be, be called of God to deliver Israel. And Israel's got to deal with all this fanaticism. He says right here in his word in Revelation 11, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Even if they're on the earth right now, and they're, you know, I can't say that God won't bring the literal ones, but it looks like Elijah and Elisha. Elisha, and that's another perfect type for this. Elisha, he walked with Elijah. But he didn't have that spirit upon him until the hour was meant for it to happen. And of course, Elijah had to go off the scene. Now, it didn't mean that he got Elijah's spirit on him. It wasn't reincarnation. But it was the Holy Spirit of God that came upon him with the same anointing that Elijah had. It was no different with, with Joshua. Joshua, the son of Nun, was the same. He walked with Moses for 40 years. And he loved Moses. Stood right there with him. When God took Moses off the scene, then he put the same anointing on Joshua as was on Moses. And he carried the children into the promised land. See? So when these men are telling me, now especially like the guy with the, with the, with the staff that believes it. And, and I can't say that a voice didn't speak to him and tell him pick up a stick and do that. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not walking in his shoes. I don't know what he went through. But I can tell you right now, it can't be this scripture here. It can't be one of the two witnesses. You know why? Because God says, I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy. How long? A thousand, two hundred and three score days according to a lunar calendar. That's exactly three and a half years. So that power doesn't come upon those two men until God is ready for Israel to hear it. And secondly, we know that fire proceeds out of their mouth. I don't think it's literal fire. I think like Elijah, the 50 soldiers come up, they disrespect God, and he says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. In other words, whatever they say, God's word answers it. The fire that comes out is the fire of God, His holiness, the Spirit of God that can wipe out the enemy. And let me tell you something, the other thing too, these guys that, because I have, I have these, some of these guys have told me, I'm casting out plagues. I feel for these type of people that, are, that this is going through. I had one man that contacted me and he said, brother, I have these thoughts that I'm maybe one of the witnesses. And he says, I don't want this thought in my head. What do I do about it? 
And I told him, brother, just ignore it. Just ignore it. Don't worry about it. You see, because it doesn't matter what we think. What matters is what God says. What His Word says is what matters. And believe me, those two witnesses come on the scene, they could be walking in Israel right now for all I know. They may not even know what they're called for. I have a feeling they would have an idea, but the thing is, is they don't have any, they couldn't do anything about it no way right now. Because God said that that power will come upon them and it's only going to be for 1,200 and three score days, 1,260 days in other words. That's how long they'll have that power. And when they go to do plagues, it's not going to be some little, little tweak over here, a little over here, or, or some imagination. The Bible says the world will hate them and the world will celebrate at the death of the two witnesses. Why? Because they will bring plagues on this earth and you want to talk about problems? It's going to be like it was in Egypt. Israel over there in Goshen, nothing was happening to them. But I guarantee you one thing, what was happening down there, oh my gosh, what was happening to the Egyptians and all the rest of the world, it was a nightmare for them. Their cattle died, their people died, their cows were stoned with fire out of heaven. You understand what I'm saying? When they said let there be locusts, they got locusts everywhere. When they said let there be frogs, there were frogs everywhere. But the children of Israel, nothing was happening to them. And believe me, the Bible says when they were, when, when, when they come to the death angel, they were ready to throw them out of Egypt. And when these two witnesses come on the scene, the only ones that aren't going to have problems are going to be the Jews that have the blood of Yeshua over the lintel and over the door and on the doorpost of their heart. And God will look and He will separate and the world will be affected. When they bring a curse down, He might say plagues over here, plagues over there. He might say let there be a plague of flies and everything. And the United States, Africa, South America, Canada, every nation under this earth will be struck by it. We know that because clearly it says in verse 9, And they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because they, these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So, if you claim to be one of the two witnesses, then you must be together with one another. And I need to see a world affected by it. That's when you know. And, and I, I, I pray sincerely, I really do, I pray for people that go through this. Remember another thing too, and I, and I even shared with the, with the brother that talked to me last night because he seemed so sincere. And I said, my brother, it, you know, I don't say that you don't have, that God maybe has not given you a gift praying for the sick or, or, you know, or if you say that you pray and the storm stopped or whatever. Any Christian, God will give that gift to any Christian there is. He said, whatsoever things you ask that you have need of, ask me, I'll give it to you. All things are possible to them that believe. That was put in the hands of any Christian. But when it comes to these two witnesses here, there's not going to be play in church. They come to witness the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach. They come to do what God did. And to Pharaoh of Egypt. They come to deal with the Pharaoh of Rome. To deal with Hadad's descendants. They come to deal with the churches that have rejected Israel. They come to deal with the world that turned against the Jews and had, did not care about them. They come to deal with all those nations that have persecuted the Jews for the last 2,000 years. That's in line with the Word. But when it happens, when that anointing falls, it won't be long before it makes headline news, I'm sure. 
Undoubtedly, the world does know who they are because the Bible says when their dead bodies lay in the street, the world is, is happy about it. They rejoice over it and send gifts. Say, yes, the world does know who they are because your word right here says so. Now, I love you guys. God knows I love you guys. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not angry with you. These brothers that, that have contacted me, you know, keep in mind, nobody knows who you are. And I love you dearly. I really do. I do love you. But you just check your experience with the Word. And, and if you do have an anointing, it doesn't mean that, that you have to be somebody. You don't have to be anybody. Just be a Christian. Love the Lord. If you got a passion for Israel as well, that's all right. Do what you can to win Jews to Christ then. If he's given you a gift to pray for the sick, humbly pray for the sick. And remember, you're not a healer. You don't save so You can't save a man's soul. You could lead a person to Christ. And even then, the Bible says no man comes to God except God draws him first. So God's the one doing the drawing. God's the one that does the saving. God's the one that does the healing. You can't heal nobody because Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, He healed you 2,000 years ago. It's a finished work in Him. See, that's what it's about. You know? We don't want to be somebody we're not. Whatever God's called us in right now, I hear people will say, Brother Steve, I don't know what I'm called to do. Neither do I, but I guarantee you one thing. I know one thing we can do. We can be a witness for Yeshua. We can be a witness that He raised from the dead. How do we, how do we witness that He raised from the dead? Live the life that He lived. Show kindness and love and piety and, and give, giving to the poor and do what you can to bless somebody else in life. If he puts your steps in front of a Jewish person, that's just another, another beautiful jewel in your crown. Because the jewels in your crown, it's not some necessarily, I mean, it's just my own thought, but I don't know if we're going to, I mean, maybe we get a literal crown as well. But the thing is, is the jewels in your crown are the souls that you've won to Christ. That's the jewels. Because in his sight, they're precious. Every child, every son, every daughter of God is precious. Witness, be a witness for Him. Glorify Him. Magnify Yeshua. Tell the world about Him. Tell the lady at the restaurant. Tell your waiter. Tell the waitress. Tell the lady at the checkout line. Be that kind of witness. It's not, not that we have to be anything different. Be, be yourself. I mean, I see many people just on fire for God. And I know there's not a lot of people that go through that, you know. But don't let Satan rob you. Don't let him rob you of what he called you to be, a son and daughter of God. And don't let Satan, you know, hey, I, I'm like you. I, I get revelations that I think is of God, but then I begin to search it with the Word. And sometimes I'm like, I can't speak about that because that's, it wasn't a revelation. It, it was just an impression. An impression is not a revelation. But just search it out. And when you see it run through the Bible and it doesn't contradict the Word, bring it forth and tell the people that the people might be able to be magnified and, and can glorify Christ by the great things that God is revealing. That's, what's, that's what is important. See, that's what we must do. We must stay with the Word of God. I love you. God bless you. Again, remember, we are going back to Israel. Keep in mind, too, and I, and I just keep reiterating this because I know not everybody watches every video that comes out, but when we're in Israel, it's no different than when we're here in the United States. We still are producing the videos, still trying to bless you and encourage you. Uh, I'm going back with Israeli News Live a lot more full-time now. Uh, especially as we near and once we get back in the homeland to try to keep you up to date with things. And we need your support even more then if you feel led in your heart. I don't like to pressure nobody. I just like to let you know we definitely need your help because I went full time to serve God and because that's what I feel in my heart that He wants me to do. And I think this is the hour for that to be done. So 
We're right there with you. We'll be laboring until he takes us home. I love you guys. From here, from our family, from my wife, Yana, and our children, Ethan and Ariella, and my father-in-law, Stefan, we all love you, greet you, and bless you in the name of Yeshua, Yeshua Adonai HaMashiach, Yeshua the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.